using technology in a sort of savvy way to make life less um, there's less scurrying about all the time for people to be moving all the time but there's more opportunities to kind of revisit things well I, I think a bit big one for me is automation of jobs um, because increasingly we're seeing jobs being um, completed by machines And this is one of the things that I think lockdown has, has shown with modern technology that, yeah, we can be isolated in one sense, but we can be even more connected in another sense. Because it doesn't matter if you're sitting in your pajamas at 10 o'clock at night, talking to somebody, um, you're still having that, you know, you can still maintain that contact. Um, and I think that's opened up a whole lot of things. I think if we manage to automate all these jobs, we can then focus on more important things um, like, like our own lives, our own de development, our own progression, our own enjoyment. The idea of um, Zoom, Zoom calls and, and everything else it is a huge step for the business world. You know, the, the sustainability, you know, to letting nature kind of take its course to support us too, versus us trying to find all these other ways to make things better, you know, when, we're, when we really aren't. I mean, we're looking at things like, okay, how would we, this might sound gross, how would we process urine you know, more efficiently into clean drinking water. I mean, we're already doing that on the station now, but how can we make that even more compact and more, um, you know, efficient and effective? And they're actually looking at mechanical systems that mimic, again, mimic what nature does, what our kidneys do, what our, you know, in, in ways that, that, that the earth through filtering through mangroves and things like that creates clean, clean water. So local stone and local wood would make a much better, uh, you know, like traditional buildings would make more sense straight off. Yes, uh, looking to the future, I can't see uh, any impediment um, except cost, of course, and there's always an element of, of cost involved in these things that won't lead us to a greener form of energy production and, and we're, we're wind rich here we're tidally rich um, so why wouldn't we exploit those uh, resources to bring a greener uh, cleaner future do you stimulate the economy by moving forward at the same time moving forward means okay, we're going to redesign society and one of the bigger things would be how we get our energy because energy is the key to everything, you know, from food to what we wear, to whether staying warm or cool, uh, to getting around. Well, I've always, I've always thought that England are very into wind power and windmills and, and I just don't understand why we've not done the same. Well, I think the island is, uh, is, is resilient in, in many spheres already. In fact, you know, we generate our own power and hopefully that will be a greener form of generation going forward. And I'd like to see us um, recognise that we have tremendous capacity to produce energy in this island. Um, I'd like to see us harness our wind and I'd like to see us harness our seas. Um, to power our own society. One concept I have is that we label everything with what the carbon footprint is off whether we're buying clothes or we're producing, you know, or food.
if we do get greener energy and um, we're going to uh, with electric cars and um, we're going to clean up um, our towns and uh, we can clean up our heating as it were and our emissions will drop we'll be in a better place uh, generally for the whole population surely there must be some way of, of developing a way where we can harness the energy of the sea I mean, we have, we have great green resources. The key issue though is, is a just transition because it's very easy for um, people um, that are in good jobs to afford this transition, but we need to bring, as I said earlier, the whole of society with us. So it's got to be a just transition.